Hello and welcome. Today we are exploring the Web Storage API with session storage and local storage. Let's get started. Today we're learning about the Web Storage API. Now the Web Storage API is not part of the DOM. I'll highlight that here because it's important to know. And it's not the first thing we've actually worked with through this JavaScript playlist that is not part of the DOM. And instead, it refers to the window API. And I'll give you some examples. Um, it's currently available to JavaScript via the global variable window. And really, we want to refer to window with lowercase. So I'm going to change that. We do not usually have to type window, though. It's implied. And therefore, when we have worked with it in the past, you haven't seen me type the word window. But let's look at an example of this. We could have a window.alert and say OK. And that is exactly the same as just typing alert and saying OK. So they would both result in alert windows or alert pop-ups, and we can see that it's halfway hidden, so I'll just click on the browser. Now you can see the page I have open as, as well as the console, but here's the first alert, and then here's the second alert. We got the same result from both. And so that is essentially referring to the window uh, global variable there, and we're accessing that alert just like we would with a prompt or a confirm through the uh, window API. Now we've also used location or window.location and that returns the URL of a website and likewise we don't have to type window in front of it either. So I'll do one more example. I'll save that. We get the pop-ups and we get the URL. And again I'm using live server here in VS Code so we get the a local IP address 127.0.0.1 and then the port number 5500 that we're viewing through our just our local live server serving our application. So that is an example of the window and we're going to do the same thing with storage. When we access the web storage API we're going to access session storage and local storage and they could both start with window dot I could type local storage or window dot session storage. So let's get started with that. The first thing we need to do is have some data to store. So I'll just define my object. And in my object, I'm going to have name and I'll put my name. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a method in here and I'm going to just call it log name function and in this anonymous function that we put for the log name method I'll put console.log and we'll have this dot name and that should work for our object now let's go ahead and make an array too so I'll have my array and my array is going to hold eat sleep and code Oop, code there we go I'll save both of those. And so now we have some data to work with. Let's make sure for just a second that our method is working. Save that. And yes, we get Dave in the console. The method is working just fine. So when we go to store something, and let's use session storage first. Now for session storage, uh, it only keeps it, the data during the session. And that is while we're on the website or possibly logged into a website and once we close out of the browser and close our session that data is no longer stored. Local storage will store persistent data and it will continue to store that data in the browser but not attached to the open tab or the, even the open browser. So we can reopen our browser, go back to the same website and retrieve that data. That would be persistent data. And we're going to store persistent data in the local storage. So let's look at how this works. We'll start with the session storage. And the first method we would use is to store some data. 
and that's not get, it's the set item. Now we need to name the store, what we're going to store in there. So let's name this, uh, let's name it my store, just something generic like that, or even better, my session store. So we know what we're referring to, and then we need to store. So we'll store my object, and then we'll take a look at where the browser actually stores this and see what we have in there. So we save that, and you would go to the application tab. Now mine is right here at the top, but you, if yours is not, you can click the arrows and it will drop down and show you the different tabs available. Let's go to application, then storage, then session storage, and you can see there's a couple of things in here. One is from live server, but the other is my session store that we named, and you can see it's storing object object. Now that might look familiar. When have we seen that before? It was when we were working with JSON. Previously in this JavaScript playlist, we worked with JSON, and JSON only stores string data. So that could be what is happening here. Let's go ahead and retrieve this and see if we get the same result. And we'll put my session data as our variable, and we'll set this equal to session storage dot get item. Now we just need to specify the name of the item that we're retrieving and we're retrieving my session store. And then after that, let's go ahead and log my session data and see if we get what we're expecting in the console as well. We know what it stores now and it says object object. We look in the console and yes, we got object object back as well. And that's definitely not what we want. So something's going on there. Let's investigate just a little bit further by trying it with my array instead of my object. And it might shed some light on what is happening. So we're going to store my array and then we're going to retrieve that data. So let's go ahead and store it and retrieve it. Now we got the data in return, but does it look like an array? We've got eat comma sleep comma code. This may not be an array, even though we did get something that is a little bit more like what we wanted. So let's use the type of keyword in our console log. And once we save that, we can see that we're getting string data in return. And all of that is because that is how session storage and local storage in the web storage API work. They only store string data. And if it's not string data, it will attempt to convert it to string data. And that should sound familiar because that is much like working with JSON. And so that makes using the web storage API with JSON an ideal way of storing data. So let's backtrack here and we'll store our data as JSON and that should make a little more sense. Now, when we look at our object, we need to remember that when we convert to JSON, we convert an object to JSON, it will not keep the methods. It's only going to keep the properties we have defined. So let's go ahead and, well, the first thing I'm going to do is move my array above my object. And then I'm also going to copy it here because we're going to want to use my array by itself as well. But I want to put another property in here and I'm just going to put hobbies and I'll store that array as well. I'll save that. And now we've got my session store it's still storing my array. But what we really want it to do is store JSON dot stringify and then put my object into the storage. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see we do get a string of data already returned, but it is a string. And we worked with this, of course, in our previous experience with JSON as well. This is just a string. It's not an object when we get it back. And we want to get an object back as well. So what we need to do is use JSON on the outside of this and call parse. And let me get that to wrap. It's not showing as well. So we'll finish the parse here. And now 
if we save that, now we have an object with an array that returns in our console. And when I click that, you can see the hobby show with the three elements in the array here and then the name property as well. So we don't wanna just get string data when we send JSON to our session storage or our local storage. We also want to get JSON back and convert that back into an object if that's what we're doing. Now let's go ahead and just work with the array. And if we do this with the array, which is what we did before, we got a string, if we'll remember. It just said eat, sleep, code. It wasn't really our array. So let's see what happens if we go ahead and use JSON with the array as well. Attempt to stringify that. We got that, okay. And now let's parse it when it comes back. Oh, I missed something on line 17. One more parentheses. There we go. We got eat, sleep, code back in array just like we wanted. And so using JSON stringify and JSON parse, as we use local storage or session storage, just the web storage API in general, that is what helps us get back and actually keep the data that we want to keep. So we store it as a string, but then we can retrieve it and it can turn back into the array or the object that we need it to be. Of course, JSON does lose methods at, through the conversion through stringify. So it does not keep methods in an object that we may have. All right, this is session storage. Now the only thing we need to change for local storage is the word session. And this is really my persistent data, if you will, because this data uh, will stay even when we close the website and relaunch. So let's look at this application tab again. And now under local storage, we have a local store and it has the array in here. We can clear these out as well just to make it look like we had left the website if we wanted to. What I'm going to do is close this completely and then we'll reopen it. So we'll stop our live server and now I'll click go live again. And I need to bring the tab over. We'll open up DevTools. We're on the application tab. Let's look at session storage. It's gone. We have the live server in here, but our other data is gone. And I did not clear it before, even though that was an option. But under local storage, we still have the local store. We still have the data, even after I closed the browser and reopened it. And that is how we have persistent data even after we have left a website and maybe we don't revisit it for a few days. We come back and there the data is again. This might work in a web application for to-do list or a high score in a game and of course many other options. But these are some projects we might want to consider as beginners and we move forward with our local and session storage. Okay, before we stop working with the web storage API, there are just a few more methods and at least one property we need to cover. So let's look at some of those. And one of the very first ones, actually I'll put it before we log anything to the console, so we know it has actually taken effect, is remove item. Much like get item, it is not too complicated. We just say local storage, and then we'll say remove item, and we need to name the item. So that would be my local store. And now when we try to log the my local data, well, it, I guess it grabs my local data before that. So let's change which line this is on. Now let's see what happens when we try to log the my local data variable. It is null. 
So if the data does not exist and we attempt to get it, it will return null and we need to be prepared for that just in case. So remember that if you try to or attempt to pull data out of storage and it is not there or the key doesn't exist, which the key was the name, my local store, it will return null. And so that is good to know. Now besides remove item, we could, instead of just removing one item, we could simply clear all of the local storage for the particular website or web app we are visiting. And of course the result of logging my local data when it doesn't exist is the same. It is just returns null. We've cleared out everything though. If there was more than one uh, name of local data, say there were several items of local data, it would all be gone if it was all in that uh, local storage or if we did the same to session storage. These methods work with either one. Now we can also return the key. The key is the name and so let's look at that local storage and then we say key and we have to give the position, the index, a number of where that is. So this is if they had several items in local storage we would say the first position would be zero just like in an array. So that would be the key and let's go ahead and just name that key for now and I'll log key here and I missed an initializer in oh yes missed the equal sign save and there's my local store which was the name of our store when we saved it there in the first parameter position of set item and then once again we refer to it when we get the item or we remove the item but it is the key and so we referred to that and that was the first key in the local storage. If there were more items in local storage, we could of course send those index positions and there is a way to find out how many items are in local storage. And that would be local storage dot length. Now remember there could be other items in local storage for other websites. This would be how many are in the local storage or the session storage if we specified that for this particular website or web app. So I'm just going to change this to store length and we'll log this and there should just be one and that is exactly what we have in there and now I'll go to the application tab I'll look at the local storage and yes we've just got one in here there's the key it's called my local store and that's pretty much it so we'll pull this back up we've gone over the get item method the set item method actually we set the item first and then we retrieve the item with get item we could remove the item we could clear all items we can specify the key to get the or we can specify the index position in local storage to get the key return and we can also use the length property to find out how many different keys are in the local storage for that particular site or web app and I keep saying local storage it's either local storage or session storage either one of those two just depends on what you use and we did use both throughout the tutorial Hi, I'm Dave and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.